Just let me know when. Now? Okay. Get on. All right. So, for those of you that don't know me, pretty much this half of the room, uh, I'm Dr. Kranswick, a chemistry professor. Um, and what I'm going to talk to you guys about in general is bioinorganic chemistry, and then end up talking a little bit about the research that we've started um, over the last year in, uh, in our laboratory. So Willie's done a little bit of stuff, so I'll highlight, well, I won't really highlight it because he never turned anything in, so I'll talk about it. Um, so Willie called it. Willie called it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what is bioinorganic chemistry? It's biology, biochemistry, and inorganic chemistry. So inorganic chemistry is the study of everything, okay, but carbon, for the most part. I just like to say that in front of the organic chemists. So it's everything but hydrocarbons. So we get we get the whole periodic table. They get a little bit of it. Um, Bioinorganic chemistry is really comes down to the role of metals in biological systems. How do through biology. How do metals catalyze reactions or lend structure to proteins in our bodies? Um, and I'll, I'm going to give some examples of this. One example is heme. So how many of you are familiar with heme? Okay, some of the biology people, they raise their hands. Willie, for some reason, rose, raised his hand. I have no idea why. <laughs> so. <laughs> heme is heme is an iron 2 complex and what we have around the iron 2 or the iron metal center is known as the porphyrin and this is a really really colored complex this is what gives our blood color the iron is responsible for transporting oxygen throughout our body so heme there's four hemes in hemoglobin Hemoglobin is the main constituent or the main protein in our blood. It goes through, goes to the lungs, picks up oxygen, and then carries oxygen throughout the body. And one of the first questions about bio and organic chemistry was, how does this work? Why do we need iron to do this? Why can iron pick up O2 in the lungs, carry it through the, through the body, and then release it to the muscles? or to the brain or other places that the oxygen is needed. How is iron responsible for this? Or what factors influence um, iron being able to carry oxygen through the blood and then releasing it at other points? So this is just a tiny sliver of bioinorganic chemistry. And really what we want to look at are essential elements or elements with biological function. So I don't study iron. I have studied iron in the past. Um, so elements that are essential include like sodium, potassium, oxygen, hydrogen, phosphorus. Why? So we got a couple metals over here, right? We have alkali earth metals. We have alkaline or alkali metals and alkaline earth. Can you guys think of why we need sodium? We're always told sodium is bad for us right? I always say, don't take too much sodium, you'll get high blood pressure. But our body, we need sodium. We need potassium. And one of the reasons we need these, anybody? Nervous. Biochemistry people? The nervous, system. the nervous system. The nervous system needs sodium and potassium to do signaling, okay? So in our brains, when we're sitting here thinking, man, this is such a boring presentation, when you do that, you're releasing sodium and potassium to make these thoughts. Um, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, these are the basis for amino acids. Phosphorus is the basis for the backbone of DNA. But we also have transition elements or transition metals like iron, which you've seen in heme. Copper and zinc are very important. Um, zinc especially for uh, structure in proteins, but we also have a lot of ultra trace elements. And the ultra trace elements to me are the coolest thing. Because the ultra trace elements are kind of, well, they're deadly, <laughs> okay? They're deadly in high quanti quantities as are iron and copper and zinc, but they're also found in such minute amounts in the body that when we first found out that our bodies, everybody in here has molybdenum in their body. Molybdenum is toxic and yet we need it to function. 
So one of the things that's really interesting is why do we need it to function? What does it do? What does it catalyze? And the ultra trace elements to me are some of the coolest things. Can anybody think why we might have lithium in our body? Now it's not essential, but some people use it, some people don't. Anybody? Vitamins, okay. Not a, it's not really a vitamin, it's a prescription drug. To balance, yes it is. So lithium is used for, it's, well it's essential for some people in balancing um, chemical signaling. What about fluorine? You don't think of fluorine as being in your body, okay? Anybody want to take a guess where we get fluorine from? What's that? For our teeth? Yeah, exactly. So making hydroxyapatate or fluoroapatate. So our teeth, okay? You don't want to eat it, right? You're it says not to eat your toothpaste. You're supposed to spit it out for this reason, okay? Um, cadmium, cadmium's cool. We don't have cadmium in our bodies. Well, you may have cadmium in your body, but for the most part, we don't want cadmium in our body, okay? It's pretty deadly. Um, iodine we need for our thyroid. So these are all types of elements that could be studied by bio and organic chemists. For the most part, bio and organic chemists like the transition metals, okay? And the transition metals are nice because, um, as I'll hopefully show you a little bit, they have interesting electronic properties. Um, so metals in biology, we've seen heme, Okay, well heme isn't the only way iron can be in our body. We can have iron sulfur clusters, and iron sulfur clusters are used to shuttle electrons through our body. Everything that takes place in our body, or almost everything that takes place in our body, are oxidation reduction reactions. So we have to be able to get protons and electrons from point A to point B. So when we do respiration, when we breathe in and bring this oxygen in, you know, that oxygen is carried throughout the body, where then it's used in the muscles. That oxygen ends up getting reduced, or, yeah, it ends up getting reduced. So we need electrons to get to where the oxygen is. We need protons to get to where the oxygen is. Another example are what are known as non-heme enzymes. So heme is this, uh, is this macrocycle, okay? Non-heme enzymes don't have that. So non-heme enzymes or non-heme iron enzymes just have an iron. And these are responsible for catalyzing a ton of reactions. So as our, as our porphyrin containing complexes like, like heme. Um, other types of, of metals in, our body, in, in at least our body. Zinc fingers, so this is a different type of drawing. Here we have zinc and it's coordinated by two sulfurs from cysteine amino acids and two nitrogens from histine amino acids. And these are structural proteins. These help in the translation of DNA or in uh, copying DNA and they also help in RNA and, and making sure that our genome, okay, so our molecular basis is, is able to produce proteins or enzymes. Um, something like manganese superoxide dismutase. So here's manganese in our body. And what this does is it takes superoxide and turns it into hydrogen peroxide or oxygen and water. Um, there's different ways we can go about it. Superoxide is a reactive oxygen species. Superoxide makes us get old or it gives us cancer. It's really, really bad, okay? It breaks down the, um, it breaks down, uh, shoot, what am I trying to say? Uh, some of the constituents of our cells, okay? So like cell walls, it can oxidize and break them down, or DNA, it can oxidize and break that down. So having something like manganese superoxide dismutase, with this type of enzyme that can catalyze or reduce the amount of superoxide in our body is really important. This giant thing has cobalt in it. How many of you know what B vitamins are? Have you heard of a B vitamin? How about vitamin B12? Okay, get a couple people raise their hand. This is vitamin B12. It's a cobalt-containing macrocycle. 
Okay, so cobalamin or vitamin B12 is responsible for making uh, the amino acid meth uh, the amino acid methionine from the amino acid cysteine, and it does this through some pretty cool ways. But these are just examples of how metals play a role in our bodies, and not just in our bodies, but in animals, in plants, in uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, other eukaryotes. Um, so bioinorganic chemists, bioinorganic chemists, we rely on spectroscopy. And spectroscopy is the use of light to find stuff out, to interrogate molecules and understand them. So one of the things bio and organic chemists are most interested in, and organic chemists alike, are electronic or geometric changes that take place. So let's say I have the heme. I'm just going to draw the heme as a little circle here. So I have iron 2. And that iron 2 wants to bind oxygen. Okay, so actually let me redraw that. So I have iron 2. And it's out of the plane of this heme. So heme is planar, and iron 2 is sticking out of the top. When I bind oxygen, all of a sudden it's in the plane. And maybe I make a superoxide. Okay, so the oxygen binds to the iron. Iron donates an electron to O2, and we get a, a radical.